very soon, support for the Rust language is going to be in the Linux kernel, at least on a trial basis. This was originally rumored to happen with the kernel 6.0 release, but in an email exchange with ZDNet, Linus stated, unless something odd happens, it referring to Rust will make it into 6.1. And at this stage, 6.1 should happen somewhere around mid-December, but looking at the recent kernel releases could very well be pushed back to January or maybe February. But regardless of when it happens, Linus is committed to making it happen unless he hears strong and probably also compelling objections, many of which he's probably already heard and don't think they are that big of a deal in the context of the kernel. But if you think this shouldn't happen, then do get in contact with the kernel maintainers to explain what your stance is. But just getting the Rust support into the kernel is not the end of the game and is not the last thing it needs to be dealt with. So at the recent 2022 Linux Kernel Maintainers Summit, a bunch of kernel maintainers like Greg Crower Hartman, Linus Torvalds, Dave Harley, and a bunch of other people, most importantly Miguel Ojeda, the maintainer of the Rust for Linux project, came together to discuss the next steps forward for Rust. On a side tangent, Dave Ali said that there are MacBook driver developers who are intent on doing their work in Rust, so there will likely be real Rust drivers heading upstream before too long. And I wonder who he could possibly be referring to. I have absolutely no idea. No idea whatsoever. It's a complete mystery. But on to the main point. When the Rust support gets merged in, it is not going to be everything. Linus wants to test out basically a minimum viable product. Torvald said he would like to see a minimal merge, just get the infrastructure into the kernel and allow developers to start playing with it. It should build, but it shouldn't do much of anything beyond the Hello World stage. That, he said, will be a signal to the world that it's finally happening. So the Rust for Linux project has been working on a lot of things for a lot of months. They've got way more work than just this available. But just to make sure things are stable on a wide scale, because sure, you can do testing amongst your maintainers, and you can do testing on a bunch of different hardware configurations, but you don't know how much is going to break until it's out to the general public public doing things that you never thought they would ever do. But Greg Crower Hartman was curious how different subsystems should be handling Rust. If a subsystem wants to upstream some subsystem specific Rust bindings, who should be handling that? Should that be dealt with by the Rust tree by the Rust maintainers or by the maintainers of those specific subsystems? Ohedda answered by saying that core Rust support should go through the Rust tree, but the rest should go through the maintainers. So if your subsystem is going to have Rust involved in it, then the maintainers should be up to date on the way that Rust works and should be fairly good at working with the language, just like they would have to be for any of the other languages involved in the kernel, whether that's C, whether it's Perl for doing the build scripts, or that brief period where C++ was being used. But this raised a concern with Alexei Strovatov, worried that specific subsystem maintainers wouldn't be able to refuse Rust patches if they don't want to see Rust used in their subsystems. And James Bottomley is right here that Rust can be a difficult language to learn, especially if you've been a C developer, you know, for 15, 20 years and have done nothing else besides C. Learning a new language is always going to be difficult. And Linus doesn't exactly want to set any global rules on this. He says this should be up to the maintainers. I would expect that if the trial goes well, more ground rules on how Rust should be used in the kernel are going to be set. Right now, we are still in the very early stages, and it's unclear exactly what's going to benefit the most from it. One issue being run into is that kernel development is going to require the use of a lot of unstable Rust features, and that creates uncertainty about which version of the language should be used. Perhaps the developer should declare a specific version of the compiler as the one for kernel development. That would encourage distributors to package that version, making it more widely available. And Thomas Gleixner said that having a blessed compiler available on kernel.org would be good enough. What he means by a blessed compiler is this is the compiler the Linux project says this is what you should be using. If you want to go and compile the kernel, don't use the latest thing available from the Rust project, use what we have instead. 
This would ensure that there are no software issues or mismatches when trying to compile the kernel, basically ensuring that everybody gets a consistent build experience. But Linus said he'd prefer to get the compilers from the distributor if possible. And generally, most projects keep a history of all of the versions available. So if the kernel only builds with one specific version, then just include in the build instructions that it should be built against that version. And a big question I know a lot of people on this channel have, especially when it comes to dealing with older hardware, is when is Rust going to become mandatory for building the kernel? And the answer to that basically is when the hardware requires it. Torvald said that if and when it comes to that point, it will be an indication that Rust is a success for kernel development. Basically, when Rust gets to the point where it's so ingrained in the way the kernel functions, and you can't really use a modern desktop system without also using Rust in the kernel build, that is when it's going to be required. And now we shift over to specifications and documentation. Glexner asked, how well specified is the Rust language now? Ohedda answered by saying that it depends on what one is looking for. Rust guarantees backwards compatibility for stable features, so those will not break in surprising ways. The kernel, though, is using a number of unstable features. Those features are, unsurprisingly, unstable. Work is being done to stabilize those features so that the kernel will be able to count on them going forward. And there is currently an ongoing effort to write a specification for Rust for safety critical systems that will lead to a standard like documentation. At the moment though, Ohedda said that developers of the GCC based GCC RS Rust compiler are finding the current documentation to be vague at times, often behavior specified as whatever the Rust C compiler does, that is not good, he said, but there is a path forward. In case you are curious, this is the GCCRS project. Basically what it is, if we can scroll all the way past these files, GCCRS is a full alternative implementation of the Rust language on top of GCC with the goal to become fully upstream with the GNU toolchain. Imagine a future where we have GNU Rust. That is going to make some people so angry and so confused, they're going to have no idea what they're supposed to think. But besides the whole GCC Rust situation, this whole Rust for Linux thing is still fairly young, and it's going to have a lot of teething issues. Gleixner also inquired into the tools that are generating the Rust bindings, and specifically, whether there is automation to ensure that the Rust and C versions of data structures match each other. And those tools do exist, Ohedda said, but they do not yet automatically convert all types successfully, but that can be fixed. Now, it's been known from the very start, and Torvalds has said this multiple times, that the Rust merger into the Linux kernel is going to be on a trial basis. But the Rust for Linux developers would kind of like to know how long that trial period is actually going to be. But um, when he asked that question, he didn't really get an answer from the group. My guess is as long as you don't annoy Torvalds like C++ did, for example, it's probably going to stick around in the kernel. Because that's the main reason it got removed. Because Linus didn't like the way that C++ was handling things and decided that it's just not worth the effort. So if you don't do that and Rust does a good job, it'll probably stick around. But I can totally understand the concern. The Rust for Linux project isn't just like a couple of patches that were thrown together in a month or so. This has been a multiple year endeavor. And not knowing how long of a trial period you're on, it does seem like the future is kind of unstable about what's gonna happen. I do hope that it goes well, but we'll have to see what happens. And a very big question to answer is why even bother with Rust? Not that Rust isn't a useful language. But why not bring these Rust-like features into C? And Ohedda said that he's actually been working with the C language committee to push for that to happen. But any such change will take a long time if it at all happens. Because a lot of these changes might not align with the goals of C. And if that is the case, then you've just wasted all your time when you could have been spending it on a language that already had these features. But to this, Christoph Helwig said that this sort of change will have to happen anyway unless the plan is to rewrite the whole kernel in Rust. And he was not pleased at the idea of rewriting working code in a new language. 
Perhaps the sparse static analyzer could be enhanced to do more rust-like checking, he said. And I had an answer by saying that the result of such efforts would be like having rust, but much later. Basically what I said before. However, Helwig did continue saying the adoption of Rust-like features could be done incrementally over time. It would be strictly worse than starting in Rust, but the kernel community has a massive code base to manage. I believe it's a couple million lines at this point. It's just, it's a ridiculous amount of code. There needs to be a way to get the benefits of a Rust-like language into all of that C code, he said. And then Cook said he's been pushing compiler developers to create safer C dialects as well. And maybe C is going to adopt more Rust-like features. But this is a solution that, if it actually does go through, is five or ten years in the making. Ohedo was also asked about documentation, and said that the Rust developers are trying to improve on the documentation that has been done on the C side. The Rust documentation mechanism makes it easy to ensure that examples are actually tested, for example, they are adhering to rules on how unsafe blocks should be explained. And the final question I want to talk about is coding style. How should the Rust code be written? Should it be idiomatic Rust code, basically Rust code written the way that Rust code should be written, or should it be more like C in Rust? And Oheda answered by saying that the code might be more C-like toward the beginning. Adoption of more advanced features such as async might take longer. I think this is very true in the case of anyone coming from C and then going into Rust. But by bringing Rust into the kernel, you're going to have Rust first developers. And those people are probably going to write in a more idiomatic Rust way. But I would expect that over time, and especially once it leaves a trial period, style guides and things like this are developed over time. But hey, Torvalds has already given Rust a ringing approval. Torvalds added that Rust isn't that terrible in the end. It's not Perl, and Perl has been in the kernel for a long time. He's said many a times in the past that he treats Perl like a write-only language. He has no idea how the language works. That's not something he deals with. And in other completely unrelated Rust news, the M1 GPU project is going really well. We've evolved from triangles, and now we can render cubes on the GPU. And not only cubes, basic desktop rendering. It renders mostly a black screen, and the GPU is going to crash, but KDE partially loads. So what do you think of Rust in the kernel? Do you think it's that big of a deal? Do you think this is going to ruin Linux? Or do you think this is a step that needs to be taken and it's going to massively improve the kernel? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, I'm gonna go and like the video. If you really like the video and you wanna become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, sign up, pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.